Hello, my name is Margaret Brody. I'm going to discuss the HIV presentation I am presenting from my PowerPoint on HIV. The definition of HIV is a human deficiency virus. This is the virus that causes acquired immune deficiency syndrome, better known as AIDS. HIV weakens your immune system by destroying your T-cells until you are unable to fight off even minor illnesses. HIV is the type of virus that causes changes to the cells in a person's body. The changes to the cells cause an altering of the cells, which causes them to alter to reproduce more of the virus, which can eventually cause an individual to have loss of the immune system response. There are two types of HIV. There's HIV-1, which is more virulent, easily transmittable, and is the cause of the vast majority of HIV infections globally. Then there is a second type called HIV-2. It is less transmittable and is largely confined to West Africa. This virus is found in Sudi, Mangabe, Monkey, inhabited the Senegal and Guinea areas. How HIV is cultured and isolated. There are three types of HIV tests. The first one is the antigen antibody, the antibody test, and the nucleic acid test. The antigen tests look for markers on the surface of the HIV called P24. They look for chemicals in the body, which makes it react to those markers. A rapid test may also be performed with a finger stick to draw blood. The average length of time to wait prior to this form of testing is usually 18 days of exposure for more accurate, they ask that you wait 90 days after exposure. The word rapid is referring to the amount of time it takes to confirm and deny if results are positive or negative, not the amount of time after exposure. The second type is nucleic acid test. The first type was the antibody and the antigen test. The nucleic acid test look for the virus in your blood. A healthcare professional will take a small sample of blood from your arm with a needle. Once the blood is withdrawn by the needle, it is then sent off to the lab for tests. This test normally takes between 10 to 33 days after exposure to detect the HIV virus in your system. It is this test isn't often used unless you are a high risk exposure candidate. Now we're going to discuss the structure and life cycle of HIV. There are seven stages in which HIV takes within your body. The first one is binding. It binds to the receptors on the surface of the CD4 cell. The second stage is the fusion HIV envelope and CD4 cell membrane, which fuse which allows the HIV to enter the CD4 cells. The third one is reverse transcription. HIV releases and uses reverse transcriptase, which is also the HIV enzyme, to convert its genetic material, HIV RNA, to HIV DNA. Integration it's the fourth stage. HIV releases integrase to insert its viral DNA into the DNA of the CD4 cell. The fifth stage is replication. Once integrated into the CD4 cell DNA, HIV begins to use machinery of CDS cells to make long chains of HIV proteins. Assembly is the sixth stage. HIV protein slash RNA move to the surface of the cell, assembly into non-infectious HIV. And the last stage of HIV 
is budding when HIV pushes itself out of the host of the CD4, releases an enzyme protease, which will break up the protein chain, make an immature HIV into mature HIV cells. There is a diagram of this and a picture of this in my PowerPoint explaining the seven steps it takes for the life cycle of HIV. I have also given a scanning electron micrograph showing HIV-1 variants on the surface of a human lymphocyte. It was sourced by the Public Health Image Library in 1989, which was given to the CDC from a scanning electron micrograph. The transmissions of HIV. HIV can be spread by a number of factors and ways. We all know blood, semen, vaginal fluids, breast milk, rectal fluids, and pregnancy are among the most widely spread modes of transmission. The common misconception is that HIV is spread by hugging and touching, the use of public bathrooms and swimming pools, sharing of cups, utensils, and telephones that someone with HIV has previously used, bug bites, and donating blood. Now we are going to discuss the HIV mechanism in the body, how HIV actually enters our bloodstream. HIV enters the bloodstream and attacks the T helper lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, essential to the functioning of the immune system. One of the functions of the T helper cells is to regulate the immune response in the event of an attack from disease-causing organisms such as bacteria and viruses. The T helper lymphocyte cell is also called the T4 or the CD4 cell. When any pathogen infects the T cell, it sends a signal to the other cells, which produce helpful antibodies. Antibodies are proteins made by the immune system in response to infection. They are produced in the immune system to help get rid, well, which help rid our bodies of foreign invaders that can cause potential disease. When a person has HIV, the antibody response is affected and will not correctly protect the immune system against these foreign invaders. HIV in infects and destroys the T helper lymphocytes and damages their ability to signal the antibody production. This will result in a decline within the immune system. The virus will then be able to reproduce without being killed from the body, which more and more HIV cells will be produced. CD4 counts are very important for the person with HIV, which is also the T4 cells. The normal range of the CD4 slash T4 count is 500 to 1500. If the count is lower than 200, it reveals that the body is unable to produce antigens and fight the infection, making the individual more at risk for AIDS or opportunistic viruses and infections to take hold puts them at a higher risk to receive these and get these. Signs and symptoms of HIV are fever, chills, fatigue, sore throat, muscle aches, night sweats, rash, swollen lymph nodes, and mouth sores. There are many ways that we can prevent HIV. There are drugs that can help with HIV. Antivirals, each class of drugs will block the virus in different ways. They account for individual drug resistance, the viral genotype, avoid creating a new drug resistant strain of the virus and maximize suppression of the virus in the blood. Prevention of AIDS, many of us know the preventions, and um, what we can do to reduce our risk of contracting HIV. The first one 
is use of latex condoms whenever you engage in any form of intimacy, especially if you are with a very high-risk individual. Use water-based lubricants. Never share needles. Get tested and treated for other STDs. These can put you at a higher risk for receiving the HIV infection as well. Take the PrEP pill to prevent you from the virus if you are high risk. Get tested regularly if exposed to HIV or blood or any kind of bodily fluids. Prevention is the number one method. And that is all for my presentation on HIV. Thank you.